All right, everybody, find your seats. We're about to get started.
gives this woman away? Her mother and I do. All right, if anyone gathered here today know of any reason why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, speak now or forever hold your peace. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the chance to be gathered here in your house to celebrate this special day for Thomas and Charlotte. Lord, we pray that you would bless this ceremony, bless this union, and may everything that's said and done today be done for your honor and glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And at this time, I will read the scripture in Proverbs chapter number 30. The Bible reads, There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. And this morning, what I would like to talk about is the beauty of, of marriage. When you think about a wedding, one of the biggest compliments that anyone would ever say about a wedding is they would say, it was such a beautiful wedding, right? What a beautiful day. What a beautiful uh, couple and so forth. When we think about weddings and marriage, we think about beauty. And I'm going to give you three reasons biblically why marriage is beautiful. Okay, number one, we have here the beauty of youth, right? The Bible says in Proverbs 5.18, Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. And of course, young people are beautiful, right? And most people would say that that's the peak of physical beauty is when you're young. And the Bible talks about the virtue of getting married young, the wife of your youth and so forth. You know, a lot of people today, they might criticize getting married young, but I actually love to see young people getting married and starting out life the right way in a time when a lot of people are doing things the wrong way. I respect the fact that Thomas and Charlotte are here wanting to do things God's way by being united in holy matrimony and being uh, two that will become one flesh, as the Bible says. And so there's the beauty of youth. You say, well, yeah, but, you know, young, young men aren't necessarily beautiful, though, are they? But, you know, the Bible says the glory of young men is their strength. And the beauty of old men is the gray head. And so there's the beauty of youth today. But then not only that, there's what the Bible calls the beauty of holiness. If you look up the word beauty in the Bible over and over again, it talks about the beauty of holiness the Lord's holiness. Uh, for example, the Bible says in Psalm 27, verse 4, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The Bible says in Psalm 96, 9, O worship the Lord, in the beauty of holiness, fear before him all the earth. And so not only is youth a beautiful thing, but holiness is a beautiful thing, isn't it? You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. You know, sin is an ugly thing in the sight of God, but holiness is is beautiful. And so not only is marriage beautiful because of the youth, not only is marriage beautiful because of holiness, but also marriage is beautiful because it represents the beauty of salvation. So right after God says marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge, in the very next breath, he says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And so right after talking about marriage, being honorable and blessed, he then turns around and says, I will never leave you or forsake you. 
Well, if you think about it, that's what a marriage vow really is. You're basically saying, I will never leave you or forsake you. You're basically saying that it's you and me till death do us part, right? We're going to stay together through thick and thin, for better or for worse. And this is such a beautiful picture of salvation because in our salvation, Jesus Christ is sort of represented by the husband and then we that are saved are represented by the bride, right? And so the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. And so if you think about it, Jesus Christ, representing the husband, is saying to us, the saints, us the saved, that he will never leave us or forsake us. You know, I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I hope that everyone here today has also made that personal decision to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And the wonderful thing about that is that if you have believed on Jesus Christ, he will never leave you or forsake you. You know, there are a lot of people out there who think that our salvation is based upon how good we are. Okay? Well, that would be like thinking that this marriage covenant has to be reevaluated every single day based on how good of a wife Charlotte is, based on how good of a husband Thomas is. You know, they're not being reevaluated on a daily basis. No, they're married, right? And it's that it's going to be that way five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years. That's the way it's supposed to be till death do us part. Why? Because it pictures salvation where Jesus Christ has died on the cross for us one time. He was buried and he rose again from the dead once. And once we have put our faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ on that cross, he is our savior and he will never leave us or forsake us. Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so this is what marriage is supposed to represent, where it's that same kind of a commitment where it's not based upon how good of a wife you are today, how good of a husband you are today, but rather it's just a commitment of, I'm accepting you as a person and there are no strings attached. It's just, I'm going to be faithful to this union no matter what happens. Now, unfortunately, sometimes human beings don't honor their commitments, but the Lord is always going to honor his commitment. And he will never break his promise to us. And the Bible says this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. I don't know about you, but to me, the gospel is a beautiful thing. There's a beauty to the gospel. You know, the Bible says in Romans 10, 15, And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. The Bible says in Psalm 149, verse 4, For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. He will beautify the meek with salvation. You see, you have to be meek to get saved because getting saved is all about being humble enough to realize that you're not good enough to go to heaven, but that it's through Jesus that you're going to heaven. It's through the blood of Jesus. It's just through putting your faith in Jesus, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so salvation is beautiful and marriage is beautiful because it represents salvation. And that makes marriage such a beautiful relationship in our lives. And so there's the beauty of youth, right? We got beautiful young people getting married at the prime of life. And I'm proud of them for getting married young and, and not going the way of this world and saying, hey, let's go sow the wild oats for like 10 years and then get married. Hey, I don't care what the world thinks we should be doing with our lives. I'm going to go with what God says we should be doing with our lives, which is to get married and have children and live a good Christian life according to the Bible. So there's the beauty of youth. Number two, the beauty of holiness, right? Because holiness is abstaining from fornication, adultery, and enjoying the union that God has ordained, marriage, right? Where a man leaves father and mother and cleaves unto his wife, 
and they too shall be one flesh, and holiness is a beautiful thing. Sin is ugly. Number three, the beauty of salvation, because marriage represents that free gift of salvation and the steadfastness of the Lord Jesus Christ, where no matter how bad we mess up as Christians, he's never going to throw us out of the family. He's never going to leave us or forsake us. He's never going to break his promise. Because let's face it, folks, if we could lose our salvation, we would all lose it every day. Because none of us is perfect, and even the thought of foolishness is sin. But thanks be to God that Jesus paid it all on the cross. All our sins are forgiven and forgotten. And as far as the east is from the west, so far has God separated us from our sins. And you know what? His mercies are new every morning. And that's what marriage is supposed to represent too. You know, over the years, things aren't going to be perfect. They never are. But every day we wake up and it's a new day. Just as God's mercies are new every morning, every day we start over and we love our wives, right? Love your husbands. And we stay faithful to that marriage that we've committed to just as Christ will always stay faithful unto us. And so if you, Thomas, and you, Charlotte, have freely and deliberately chosen each other's partners for life, would you please join hands? Thomas, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife? Will you love her, honor and keep her in sickness as in health, in poverty as in wealth, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her so long as you both shall live? Do you so promise? I do. Charlotte, will you have this man to be your wedded husband? Will you love him, honor and keep him, in sickness as in health, in poverty as in wealth, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him so long as you both shall live? Do you so promise? I do. Thomas, would you repeat after me the following words, please? I, Thomas. I, Thomas. Take thee, Charlotte. Take thee, Charlotte. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Charlotte, would you repeat after me the following words, please? I, Charlotte. I, Charlotte. Take thee, Thomas, to be, Thomas. To, be my wedded husband. to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold, to have and to hold. From, this day forward. from this day forward, for better, for worse, for, better, for, worse. for richer, for poorer, for richer, for poorer. In, sickness and in, health. in sickness and in health, to love, cherish, and obey, obey. till death, Til death do us part. May I have the rings, please? All right. And Thomas, would you put that ring on the ring finger of Charlotte's left hand? All right, and then Charlotte, if you would put that on Thomas's ring finger. And now in the presence of our friends, family, loved ones, our church, and in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. And now it is my pleasure to be the very first to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Forte.
it's over. I have to stand up. Oh, somebody, <laughs> stand, somebody stand up. <laughs> Somebody's got to stand up. <laughs> all right, all right. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got, I got. How you doing? All right. Thank you. Dude, my feet were hurt my <laughs> It was awesome. Yeah, it looked really good. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, it's no mad rush. It's okay. I don't want to be rushing. Huh? Very good. Very good. I just pour him. Yeah, I didn't mess up royally. <laughs> she looked beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. It was awesome. I loved uh, it. was a beautiful sermon. Yeah. Gospel. We love that. Yeah. So it was beautiful. Awesome. Let's yeah. celebrate. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That was yeah. So awesome. I feel like a, it's a weight relieving. You know, yeah. Well, now. Yeah. 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 They deployed the the oh, white thing. Yeah. yeah. Very good. They're yelling at each other. Like, oh, You're going too fast. Yeah. Go. They sat down. Going too fast. They got it. Typical. Yeah, that was great. Just great. <laughs> Just gone <laughs> here. <laughs> All right, very good. You want him to pose too, or no? Yeah. So Thomas, hey, can you just kind of like put your pin on the page and kind of like smile and look at the camera, like nice. Right, same thing right there. Same thing, just right under him, right there. What I can do is where everybody's standing, just to keep it simple, what happened basically is to the table. You want to go right to the table, not in? Sure. You probably the best thing. You can do your pictures at any time. Cool. Thank you. Just so people don't. And now give us the biggest hand of applause for the night the new Mr. and Mrs. Forte, Thompson and Charlotte. Go ahead and give them a big hand. All right, so go ahead and give them a hand, folks. <laughs> go ahead and give them a big hand. What do you need to do? All right, this is the final applause. Once again, everyone, give them a final applause. And now.
happy cover. Congratulations. All right. Congratulations. We're so proud of you. It's exciting. Very, Very cool. Very excited for you. And Very Paul. good. Yes. Dad, what do you want to what say? What would you tell him? Cover? Give him some so, advice. I'm so happy that you're uh, Harder family. Very good. Yes. Never go to bed angry and always no, no, say no, I love you every night before you sleep. We've been married 58 years. That's good advice. Is that Very good. Yeah. All right, all right. Congrats and uh, good luck, and uh, we'll miss you at home. It's gonna be different. Yeah. Are you gonna take her room? Definitely not. No. <laughs> go, go the bathroom. Room. Bathroom will be clean though. That's what I'm looking. <laughs> for. A clean bathroom is what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very true cool. True confessions. Yeah. It's true confessions. <laughs> Bathroom. Very cool. You got your own bathroom. You got a bathroom again. And 24 7 use. No more, no more waiting. No more hour long showers or <laughs> bath bombs. Yeah, that's what they like. Alright. Very cool. Well, congratulations. Congratulations, Charlotte. We've known you since you were born and we're so proud of you Super growing happy. up and uh, getting married. We're so excited for your new life. Very cool. Thank you. It's perfect. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, Charlotte. Well, congratulations uh, to the newlyweds. You know, as far as uh, words of advice, I would just say, you know, uh, be kind to one another, be patient, and remember, I guess maybe this is bad advice or it doesn't make any sense, but this is the advice that was given to me, is that she's, she's your wife, not your sister. He's your husband, not your brother. Don't treat each other like siblings. Uh, so I don't know if that's going to be any help, but it certainly has helped me throughout the years. But uh, yeah, congratulations. It's great to see young people getting married and making those right decisions. I'm very, uh, very proud of both of them and, and, and wish only the best for them. I've seen that, that Sony one. That's yeah. love. I've seen That's love. love right there. That camera over there.